Hi, I'm Dave Walton, and it's time for the Daily Bread. All right, what's up, guys? So we are headed down to a, um, I don't know what you call it, like a TV film studio, recording yeah, studio. TV studio. Um, and I'm going to be filming a show today with Dave Walton. You guys have actually seen him, if you've seen all the episodes a long time ago, speak uh, at our company. Uh, he runs the Dave Walton um, Ministries, and we fund uh, a lot of the work that they do. It's pretty incredible. They do tons of work down in Nicaragua, uh, a couple of different areas there, and then they've got feeding stations in Brevard, North Carolina, a couple of different locations where they're providing like, I mean, it's close to a million meals a year that they provide. And um, but Dave is one of he's a unique character and one of the most inspirational guys I've ever been around because he's the definition of a guy that just like lives life freaking on fire um, and is completely sold out and completely all in um, on his beliefs and, and on his mission on this earth and and uh, we'll talk about that I'm sure and uh, not really sure what else we're gonna talk about but it is a Christian show on a Christian cable network um, so I'm going to be telling a little bit about kind of my faith and my story and things that have happened over the course of my life and what has brought me to this point and, um, and how faith has played a role in that. And so I'm excited to talk about it because it's not something that you guys have seen a lot from me. I'm not kind of one of those guys that's kind of in your face like, do you know where it happens when you die? You know, that kind of thing. But um, I've always just tried to be, you know, a lighthouse and just be someone that was easily recognizable as different like there's something different uh, about that guy that's kind of like that's kind of the way I, I roll um, so it'll be interesting to kind of put some stories out there that you probably haven't heard before but. welcome you ladies and gentlemen to uh, Nightline you know there's always something fresh in the air when Nightline uh, is on television and we really appreciate that and uh, I would like to just get immediately into a scripture because this is so important the day that we live in now, Ephesians 6 and 12 says, For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Well, you can't say it any better than that. That's our battle. You know. And uh, again, we want to thank you for uh, tuning in to Nightline. Programs have been great, been anointed, as we said before, and the Lord's really touching people. But i got to tell you this. I've got a, uh, I got my great friend here, I'm telling you right now, and I hardly ever, I, I'm in and out of their offices over there, but boy, have I seen some <laughs> growth in this young guy. And he, uh, yeah, you might say, well, young, yeah, he's young. That's exactly right. <laughs> when you're 71, everybody's young. You look back and see it. You understand what I'm saying? And, uh, but uh, Tyler Harris, thank you so much, man. For, Absolutely. Uh, for uh, coming in and you know, being a, a, a part of our program and all and uh, so uh, you know look, I'm not going to w waste any time I, I you know even even if I've got a minute or two more I don't I don't need any time I really want to get into uh, to you and and uh, you know what good things the Lord has done give me a little bit of a, a background for the people who are viewing about uh, your life maybe before you came uh, to know the Lord sure uh, and I appreciate you having me it's an absolute Absolutely. pleasure to be here um, I think the best place to start is just as a child. I had a good upbringing. My family was, was great. Grew up in church. Um, that old joke of had a drug problem. I was drug, drugged to church on every Sunday and, and Wednesday night. Um, but never really had a relationship with God. Uh, said a prayer when I was in the second grade. More than likely, that was fueled by fear <laughs> and got baptized and at that point was a Christian, right? Um, but as life went on in middle school and high school and then into college, there really was no relationship there. Um, there was the kind of the canned routine prayer at night, um, but there was no dialogue and there was really no living out of that uh, purpose. And so throughout middle school, high school, college, um, no major issues, had a, had a you know, decent life. And ultimately, I was at actually a men's Christian conference um, here in South Carolina. 
and a little breakout session afterwards that night. And a gentleman uh, raised his hand and he asked the guy that was leading, leading the session, he said, well, how do you really know? How do you really know that you've been saved? And as I was kind of sitting in the back, I'm like, how do you really know? <laughs> I'm like, it's a great question. And the guy that was leaving, leading the, the session said, well, if I picked up a two by four and slapped you across the face with it, would you know that? I, I was like, man, and it, and it really just hit me. I was like, man, I don't, I don't know that I've ever had that moment. I don't ever know. I don't know that I've ever had that experience where I felt like I'd just been slapped upside the head and that life change. Yeah. And that really started uh, a process that it wasn't instant. It wasn't instant that there was all of a sudden this relationship, but, but things started to develop and started to grow and it started moving in that direction. And I think that was back in 2010. So over the last eight years, uh, I've gone through a lot of ups and downs, um, a failed marriage, uh, failed business and just life, you know, life happened. And it wasn't until really last year, had a lot of things going on. I was succeeding in business. I was in uh, a new marriage that was going very well and a lot of different things happening. But at the time I was still struggling with alcohol. And that was one of those things that was still kind of holding me back. And it's funny, I, I was, I was, riding up to Asheville, North Carolina. Uh, my wife is from there and she had gone up there earlier that day. I had to finish work and then head up there and, and we were gonna be with her family and grilling out. And, and so I, I sent her a text message and I said, um, I'm heading up there. You want me to stop by the store and, and grab some beer? And uh, she had had a rough day. Uh, we had a very young child at the time who had been uh, a handful. And uh, I said, or, or maybe beer and tequila. And at that point was when I'm kind of riding up 26 through the mountains and lost service. So I didn't get an immediate text back, but it was this period of time in my life where I was just kind of trying to figure out what my purpose was. I was succeeding. I was doing well, I was making good money, uh, experiencing great things. But what was like, why am I here? What was my purpose? And, and began praying in the car and just crying and praying. Just like, I need God, I need you to tell me like, what, what am I supposed to be doing? Like, why, what's my purpose? Why am I, why am I on this earth? And finally, I said, I need you to show me right now. Like right now, I need you to tell me. And right when I said that, what happened was I went kind of on the other side of the mountain. My service came back. My wife texted me back. And so as I'm saying, I need you to show me right now. What am I supposed to be doing right now? My phone vibrated in my lap the very second I said that. And I looked at my phone and it said, preach. And she meant it like, should I get beer and tequila? She's like, preach. Like, yeah, I need what all I get has been a bad day. But I looked at it and I went, wow. come again? Yeah. The interesting thing that I found over the course of the next year and leading up to today is that it didn't say be a preacher. It said preach. And there's different platforms that you can preach from. And mine happened to be social media uh, and doing a lot of things that we're doing uh, there. And so that's really led me to where we are today. And, and finally, that relationship um, where every decision I make, everything I do is, is based, on, um, based on my dialogue with with God and, and what I'm supposed to be doing here on earth yeah, man. yeah. I think you uh, what, what you were saying is important that uh, a lot of people would understand that we need a purpose mm. it, you know it's, it's hard to um, just get up in the mornings and start getting out to do something unless I've got a driving purpose within me and so you've come to realize that mm -hmm. you've got a lot of guys that you uh, and this uh, social media network and business and that sort of thing. Yes, sir. Tell us a little bit about that. What, what do you do to help these guys uh, understand where they are and how do they arrive at a purpose like you did? Absolutely. So it's, it's been a transition. Uh, it's been a process because at first it was very monetary driven. Uh, it was about how to be successful. It was just teaching people how to, you know, what it looks like to be successful. And I was really burning the candles at both ends. I mean, I, working 16, 17, 18, 20 hours a day sometimes and 238 nights on the road last year, uh, 238 nights in a hotel last year and with a new child and, and a wife. And um, I realized something very interesting. I, I, I kept saying that all this stuff that I was doing was for my legacy. Like this was legacy, 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 legacy. All this 
documenting my life on social media and I've got podcasts and the Daily Vlog. It was all legacy. And I came to this realization uh, recently um, talking with a guy that I actually hired as a coach. And we went through this process. He just kept asking me why, but why? Well, it's legacy. Like this is, my daughter will be able to see these videos one day when she's older. She'll be able to see all this stuff that I'm doing. He said, but, but really why, but really why? And after about 11 hours of asking me why, he's like, I'm going to go 20 minutes, just kind of write down what you're thinking. He came back, he said, so what'd you write? And I wrote at the top of the page, what kind of legacy am I really leaving if my daughter has to watch these videos to hear the words that should be coming out of my mouth to her in person. And from there forward, everything changed. And, and I used to almost make fun of this idea of work-life balance, that only people that talked about it were using it as an excuse to work less. But now I've really embraced this idea of just going all in and in all areas, and one of those areas being your, your faith. And so now that's what I want to talk to everybody about is how do we just thrive in all areas? A lot of people want to talk to you about how to be successful or how to get in good shape. Mm -hmm. I want to talk to people about how do we become successful, be in good shape, have the best relationship with your spouse, have the best relationship with your kids, have the best relationship with God. Are you meditating daily? Are you praying daily? Are you doing all those things and just excelling in in life and it's just a completely different perspective that's now coming from me than they heard the first year and it's been the most fulfilling thing that I've ever done and the conversations that I've been able to have with people and the impact that I'm seeing um, it's incredible and it's really that moment where I was like ah oh, that's what it meant when they said preach that's, exactly what, that's what it meant and and for me it's not I'm not in your face you know do you know what's going to happen when you die yeah. it's just there's something different about that guy. I don't know what it is yet, but there's something different. And I think it's doing things like this, the conversation that we're having, that, um, that these things will slowly come out and, and we'll be able to affect thousands of people. And that's my, that's my intent. I agree, yeah. there's no doubt. Because <clears throat> I, you know, I watch a lot of your stuff on social media. <clears throat> and so um, I'm moved by it. Thank and, you. And I learn. I'm, I'm 71, but I'm learning. <laughs> and uh, I've always uh, said to the Lord, I wanted to remain teachable, mm. no matter where I'm at, uh, because I surely don't know it all. And uh, but but I, I want to do better. Mm. But, uh, even at marriage, yep. even at 71, I'll absolutely. Do marriage, and I've, I've got grandkids, and I want to do better every, every phase of one's life. And somewhat of a legacy that is. I mean, mm. yes, absolutely. I, I'm, I'm like you, I've been all over the place and spoke to hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people, but, uh, but when it really boiled down, what, 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 what's, what are you really uh, involved in that leaves mm. the real, true legacy? Absolutely. Yeah, and so I think we're on the same thing. I'm just, except when it said preach, mine was to go preach. I've, but yours I, was literal. <laughs> I understand yours, and I wish we had more folk that would do Sure. What you're talking about, because to me that's lifestyle, mm -hmm. lifestyle it is. preaching, lifestyle living, lifestyle evangelism, lifestyle loving, mm -hmm. caring, mending, this sort of thing. Hey, we're going to be right back, and we're going to go to some music. But I, man, I, I love the way this guy brings it out and the way that he, you know, says it to you. So I, I want you to hang on. We got a lot more coming. Eternal vision. Jesus is alive. Well, thank you so much. And uh, again, we have a. Uh, Tyler Harris is our guest, and uh, um, and if you've been listening, look, you may have some, you know, kids and grandkids, and maybe even on you, you know, somewhere in your family line, need to really listen to what this man's saying. Uh, he, he's 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 been on the low end, and he's been on the high end, but once he got to the high end, he was interested in helping the low end to reach back, and who can we help? Let's talk about that. You. Uh, how do you see yourself now? You know, you're talking about preach. Well, I love the social media that you're doing. I, I try to watch it. And I'm going to encourage people to go and uh, check out any of his social media stuff to get kind of an idea of how he encourages people. Share a little bit of that. Well, I think, you know, back to what we were saying before the break, some people need that in your face. Yeah. And some people respond to the in your face. Some people it takes time. Some people it, it takes a gradual That's approach. Right. Um, social media, there's never been anything like it. The ability to reach people across the entire world. Uh, we'll, we did a live Q&A the other day 
Um, just sitting in my office in Greenville, South Carolina, I had a guy call in from Nigeria. I had another guy call in uh, from Lebanon. Um, these people are following the content and again that preach, the message that's going out on Facebook or Instagram or on YouTube, it's, it's reaching so many people. And, and so the, the analogy I use is this, the lighthouse, is being a lighthouse. Yeah. And specifically, if you look at the dynamic between being a lighthouse versus a tugboat. The tugboat goes out and one ship at a time, it brings it to, to harbor. But if you know anything about ships, which I don't, but I do know the analogy that the engines and tugboats wear out fast and they don't last very long. It's not sustainable long term. The interesting thing about a lighthouse is lighthouses last for hundreds of years. I mean, people go to visit lighthouses when they go yeah. to certain, yeah. certain areas. But what does that lighthouse do? It just stands tall. It's an example and it just shines its light. It's not, it's not necessarily concerned about if the individual person chooses to, to be guided by that light. It just sees its job as putting the light out there. And in this regard, letting God do the rest. Yeah. Um, and by doing that, it's sustainable long-term. Um, I would view you as some kind of, some type of, combination of the two some type of supercharged tugboat that somehow is able to sustain it's and it's incredible um that's just not my personality i think it has to do with personalities and uh and again i think it's 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 just living in and leading by example and that's really what i what i wanted to do and why i wanted to start documenting things so that they could see more of the real life of of what i'm doing on a day-to-day -day basis i'm not perfect by any means. And I show the good, bad, and ugly. Um, but if the intent is right, then I think that that's what's, in, that's what's important. Yeah, you're a lighthouse, no question. It's a lighthouse to, uh, like, maybe have an example of uh, sure. someone who is um, maybe struggling, you know, in, the, this, in your organization yeah. uh, that are struggling, and yet how uh, you've you know, shown the light to them. And, and what I know is that we're all struggling. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's, well, that's, that's that's the thing I've I've come to realize is that everyone's struggling somewhere in some area of their life, and that's why I like this approach of looking at all four areas: your yeah. your body, your relationships, your mind, uh, and your business. And and I encompass faith in the mind, and so that's what we try to teach people is how to win in all four of those areas. But more importantly, what I try to do is keep people accountable because everyone needs accountability. It's one thing that I can look back at all the bad parts of my life, the rough stages of my life, and it was when I didn't have accountability. Yeah. And so with our organization, we now have all of our agents, which are across the country. Uh, I lead them with this accountability in all four of those areas where we sit down and we have three goals in each of those four areas. Three goals over the next 90 days. What do you want to achieve? What do you want to do on a daily basis in all four of those areas? And then monthly, we get on a call. Uh, it's actually a video conference so that we can see each other face to face and I just hold them accountable. Yeah. And it can be something as, as specific as, okay, so with relationships, it says here um, that we're going to do a mandatory date night with your wife uh, every Saturday night. So tell me about your date Saturday oh with your God. wife. And they're like, well, you know, this past Saturday, some, well, what? it says here, non to go date night every Saturday. What happened? And then I'm trying to figure out, well, what, what, what happened? Well, we couldn't get a babysitter. Okay, great. Well, let's, let's get online right now and let's go to care.com or some other site and find a new babysitter that you can have in your arsenal so that this doesn't happen next week. And let's sit down right now and go and plan that date for next Saturday. And, and then we look at, okay, you said you're going to pray and read your Bible. It's going to be the first 20 minutes of your day. How's that been going? Well, you know, the first week it, it was good and then, you know, things happen. Okay, so those days that it doesn't happen, why? Did you get rushed and busy? Why did, it, why did it not happen? Yeah, you know, just I woke up and I had to decide whether I'm going to shower or whether I'm going to spend that 20 minutes. Like, that's fair. Like, that happens. But why didn't you do it in the afternoon? Or what about later that night? It's not just because of your routine says do it in the morning that you didn't do it, that you just, sorry, God, yeah. we're not going to talk today. Um, so it's really just holding people accountable um, so that they have that structure in place yeah. and that they can reevaluate it every 90 days. And, and decide, okay, I'm, I've, I've got that area down. I don't need you to keep me accountable for that 20 minutes now. Let's go a little deeper. Now I wanna, 
Um, now I have this new devotional that I want to do, or I have a men's group that I want to start, you know, things like that. And it's just accountability is, is key. Well, that is, that's remarkable. And because when you really think about it uh, in Christian dome, in church or anything, mm -hmm. business, I don't care where you are, accountability is paramount in these things that we, if we're yeah. ever to be producers in anything, that would be top of the list. Absolutely. Yeah. And then if we don't, I, th I think what you're, what you're saying here, let's get an answer. And because a lot of times I find softness in a mm -hmm. lot of people yep. that when we don't do it, well, we just cast it aside. That's and all it right. Becomes, you know, sure. And, 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 you know, more like what we do is we try to get an answer to it to how we can make this thing happen. Why? Because it'll produce good fruit in our lives. Mm -hmm. and that's what we need to do, yep. be held accountable in these areas. Well, that, that's a, just absolutely phenomenal. And I know that you're uh, ministering to guys now. Um, so people can get with, get with you on Facebook? Absolutely. It's on Instagram. It's at Tyler Harris Page. Facebook, facebook.com slash Tyler Harris Page. Uh, but I'd love to talk to people. I, I answer all my messages. Yeah. And, and people are hurting out there. People that are watching this right now, in one of those four areas, probably more than one of those four areas, right. they're hurting. And, and I'd love to be able to talk to and them. Now you, have a, you have a question and answer time, too. That, uh, we do live Q and A's from time to time. Um, there's a lot of content coming out on our social media. A lot of, I've got a daily vlog that comes out every single day, podcasts, things like that. Uh, but more importantly, for them to know that if they are going through something and they type in a question there, that it's actually, it's me. It's me responding. I take that extremely seriously. If someone's vulnerable enough to put themselves out there, there's some deep messages that come in, like some, some tough stuff. And I take time and and really try to invest in that because i know what that feels like on the other end to feel like i'm going through this and i'm for the first time maybe gonna actually reach out to someone for help like i don't take that lightly at all you got two minutes tell us a little bit about what you, what your uh, who, who you what you work your, your job that kind of a description what, what do you do? sure I'm, I'm in life insurance and and it's funny because you know people talk about well you know i, I It'd be cool to get on social media and do all this stuff, but I just don't really feel like I do anything interesting. I'm like, really? Because I sell life insurance. And there's nothing less interesting than that. <laughs> um, but th we have built a, a great organization. I have fantastic business partners that were the mentors that came into my life when I was in the toughest spot I've ever been in. And when they were the ones that really pulled me out and breathed life into me. And I owe everything uh, to them. Joseph Caldwell, Nathan Wells, and, and Jeff Mag. Uh, and we're a family. And we treat everybody within our organization like family. And we care more about those other four or other three areas than we do the production and the business side. Because we know if they are winning in the other three areas, that the production side is a byproduct of that. That, of course, you'll do better in business if you're winning in all those other three areas. But just like a table, if you eliminate a leg and you put any pressure on it whatsoever, it falls. Exactly. Well, I can tell you this, and uh, we're less than a minute now, but I, I want to tell you, I, I, uh, I'm, a, I'm a witness uh, firsthand uh, to being in their office and arriving and walking in and just, uh, it's is just amazing. I don't know how Joseph Caldwell is. He wants you to, he, he's just one of the most loving guys mm -hmm. ever been around in my life. And, uh, and, and, his, and his people show the same thing. I think the greatest thing that you can do in business, you can do in church, you can do in lifestyle evangelism, you can do in any part of your life, in family, children, etc., is just love them. Mm. Now, I spell love, T-I-M-E, because you can't love unless you spend time. And so I, I, I always remember that. Do you understand what I'm saying? Mm. Spend time with your people. This, this, this expresses more love than you could ever be as a young man or as a child. Daddy loves me because he spends time with me. Thank y'all so much for tuning in tonight. God bless you. Friend. Friend.